Melvin Capital's collapse had a big had a big play in this. Um, the ability for a big a big firm to not be able to clear or match the other side of a trade has a has a trickle down effect. It then goes to the clearing firm, and then you have fears about the clearing firm not being able to uh, to settle that trade. So I think that's where it started. Yeah, what's going to happen if 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 DTC doesn't move that right? So we, we you know we want to blame DTC. We want to say DTC is the bad guy. They raise the requirements to 100 percent. Well, what happens if they don't do that? Then you have counterparty risk. So if I sold a share of GameStop to someone at $350 and that person was short and covered a short, say that person was Melvin Capital. Melvin Capital is now completely underwater. They don't have enough money to pay for that purchase to cover their short position. So now the clearing firm is going to pay on behalf of Melvin Capital. And then the clearing firm will try to collect that money from Melvin Capital down the, down the line later on. If they don't get it, they mark it as a loss. Now multiply that billions of times. Now the clearing firm can't pay to settle those trades. So you have billions of people that sell stock that aren't able to get capital back for that sale. You have counterparty risk. That means that you have a complete market breakdown and it's a bigger story than just GameStop. It's the whole market is not able to function. And you were saying in 2008, something like this happened and they didn't raise the requirements or what was that one like back then? They were too slow to raise requirements, and we saw the we saw the trickle down effect when it started with Lehman, and then all the and then all the hedge funds that Lehman supported became counterparty risks because Lehman was the clearing firm for those funds, and now if the clearing firm can't back uh, the clearance of those trades, then you again you have a situation where you have people selling stocks that aren't able to get the money for selling those stocks. Complete market breakdown. That's why we had the government intervene and bail out all the big banks. It's going to lift. It's going to lift the eyes of the regulators from not focusing on PDT restrictions and moving their focus onto maybe not allowing hedge funds to take ten time leverage or being able to short a hundred and forty percent of the total market cap of the stock. How does that even happen? How do you short a stock past its market cap? How did the Citadel play a role in the DTC or uh, as part of this? Um, they do have a play in it. Uh, absolutely. They are one of the biggest market makers on the street and they facilitate a, a lot of the liquidity that we see. So we're able to buy a share without driving up the stock price 10% every time. They are what's called the street side of the trade. So there's the customer side of the trade and the street side of the trade. Citadel would be the street side of the trade. They're one half of the equation when it comes to clearing. So they're, they're, if it's not Melvin Capital on the other side, maybe it's Citadel on the other side. But if a customer, if say John Doe is going to sell a share, they're selling it. They're not selling it versus, you know, Jane Doe. They're selling it versus the street. The street is usually a firm like a Citadel. Would, is there an arguable statement to say Melvin Capital caused some of this because of their issue and then Citadel bails them out? Is there an argument of anything like that? Is that part of how this comes about or would that be something that you couldn't you wouldn't know i mean it's kind of speculation where it really started but melvin's hard to imagine because it's such big numbers we're talking about but if you keep it real simple and kind of think in your own account you go short you know you go short a stock say you got short kodak right if you remember that trade you got short kodak and next thing you know the news comes out that the government is giving them a huge loan and the stock's up 400 percent and now you just have you know, a 400% loss at least in that stock, your account could be negative, you know, negative $100, right? You, your account, you lost everything in your account because you don't have enough money in your account to buy that short back. So what's going to happen is your broker, I say Weeble, Weeble's going to buy in your account. We're going to cover your position so the position is flat. And then we're going to call you up and say, please deposit that $100. And if you say, I don't have $100, What's going to happen is Weeble is going to be left holding that debt, and most likely we'll just write it off. Um, but if you multiply that by a huge amount, and it's you know we're talking billions of dollars, Weeble isn't going to be able to cover that debit. So what happens? Our clearing firm will cover it for us. Now, if you multiply that number even bigger, and the clearing firm can't cover that debt, now you have total counterparty shutdown. So that person that sold the stock to you that we had that we had to buy to cover your short position, that person is not going to get paid by anyone because we will can't, the customer can't pay for it, we will can't pay for it, and then the clearing firm can't pay for it. So then there's a complete market breakdown. TD shut it down first on Monday, I believe, 
right? Or maybe Tuesday. I'm, I'm sorry. It's my, I've been awake for three days. Um, TD shut it down first, and then Robin Hood, I mean, Slab was on TV yesterday talking about, you know, how they're keeping it open, right? I mean, this is what Robin Hood was built for. And, you know, then they shut it down. Um, so it's now it's now affecting now in a in like a cascading effect all the different clearing firms. So then what happened is you saw a huge influx of GME and AMC um, orders come through to our clearing firm, right? Our clearing firm, you know, covers Tasty Works, you know, Weevil, SoFi, Ally, I mean, really big app-based platforms go through our clearing firm. So now our clearing firms are so a huge influx because they weren't, these orders weren't getting cleared through TD anymore. They weren't getting cleared through Robinhood. And all of a sudden our clearing firm, you know, looked at their calculation on how much they would have to put on, on collateral reserve, DTC, and said, oh, we got to stop now. And then I believe a couple minutes ago, TD just said, well, we're back open. For, for these names, right? Because their two-day settlement cycle ended. Now they have a bunch of capital on their side and they're gonna see a huge influx of orders come to them. It's all, you know, kind of pushing it back and forth, right? It's a cascading effect. Yeah, so TD, TD has their own clearing firm. They clear for themselves. Robin Hood clears for themselves. Uh, you know, the big guys, they all do. So, uh, you know, Fidelity clears for themselves. Obviously, Merrill Lynch is one of the biggest. Um, they clear for themselves. So. They, they, they can, you know, they pick and choose themselves if they want to open and close it based on, you know, the capital they need to put a collateral. But everyone, like I mentioned earlier, like 95% of every single trade that happens on the U.S. exchanges settles, meaning crosses hands, right? Paper certificate, obviously now it's digital, for cash, happens at DTC. Apex Clearing is the name of our clearing firm. They, they do clear for pretty much all of the new brokers that's come, that have come out in the past couple of years. Um, they are like a technology focused type of clearing firm. Uh, but you know, Citadel is, we do do work. We do partner with Citadel, but solely for uh, stock execution, right? Not for, not for settlement. And then what happens is Citadel will settle directly with our clearing firm Apex. We have nothing to do with that clearing process. Uh, I think a self-directed account shouldn't be directed by the brokerage firm. We want every single stock that's listed to be able to be traded by our customers full stop. Um, and right now, we, w we were told that if we allow customers to trade these, they will not be able to settle those shares, meaning our customers will be in a worse position if they wanted to sell GameStop, they listen to our clearing firm, they won't get paid for selling their shares. Yeah, no, but, but, if you, but if you buy, you're paying for the stock. And for those two days, the clearing firm has to front your money for you, right? If you sell, they already hold the stock. They're not, they don't have to front the cash for a sell. DTC doesn't require any, any collateral for a sell. They own collateral for buys. We clear through a system called DTC. Uh, back, you know, 200 years ago, you would buy a stock and you would pay someone out, what do they get, out in front of on the Buttonwood tree, out on Wall Street, in front of where now the New York Stock Exchange sits, and you would hand that person cash and they would give you a stock certificate, a paper stock certificate. We don't deal in stock certificates anymore because it's inefficient. We trade so much volume now, having all that paper obviously does not work. So companies like DTC were started. DTC is the go-to company. They own this business, basically. They pretty much have a monopoly. There are alternative ways to settle trades, but DTC settles more than 95% of trades that happen on the street. Now, DTC needs to, needs to maintain an orderly marketplace, meaning if you set a share, you are going to receive payment for those shares. That's what they guarantee. In order to guarantee that, they set collateral rates um, for custodians, right, or, or clearing firms. So typically, on a typical day, there is two days till settlement. You trade today. You trade today. You have tomorrow, Friday, and then you have Monday. So the stock will settle on Monday. Those two days, meaning Friday and until the until the funds actually come and exchange hands, so to speak. Someone has to fund that trade, and the clearing firm does that. That's one of their jobs. And typically, there's a collateral of about anywhere from 1% to 3%. So if you were selling a share of the Apple, that clearing firm until settlement date would pay 2% of the notional value of that trade to DTC that DTC will hold as collateral until settlement happens. Now, because GameStop, AMC, and KOSS are so volatile, 
DTC has raised that requirement collateral rate to 100%, meaning that for every single dollar that exchanges hands in those stocks, the clearing firm has to send for deposit for two whole business days that exact same amount of the notion of the trade. Now, when we're talking about GameStop at $250, $350, billions of shares trading, we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars that the clearing firm physically has to send in cash to the, to the to DTCC to hold there for two whole business days. And to be frank, the clearing firms are not that well capitalized. They can't do that. So in order to stop the clearing firm from going out of business, they stop the settlement of those shares, resulting in firms like Webull not being able to allow customers to trade those stocks. There's, there's two discussions going on. One is a discussion directly with DTC to lower their collateral rates. Uh, and then the second is uh, getting funding. So right now, there's a lot of high level phone calls happening at clearing firms around the country to banks, namely the JP Morgans of the world, the Bank of Americas of the world, uh, the Pershings of the world, and they're looking for small short term bridge loans, right? Where they can basically uh, help out their balance sheet. They can, they can lift up their balance sheet so they have the ability to send that collateral to DTC for the short term. So, I mean, I have some information. And again, I want to disclose that I wasn't involved in those conversations. These conversations happened between my clearing firm's management, the regulators, and DTC. Okay. So, just how the story was disseminated to me was when I got the phone call from my clearing firm that we were good to go and we can open up those shares for trading again, the information was that there was multiple ways that this happened. Number one was that there was a large amount of financing that my clearing firm was able to get a hold of to be able to pay for the increased cost of collateral to clear those specific volatile names. Number two, there was a negotiation. I was not involved in negotiation, but there was a negotiation down of those collateral rates from a ridiculous amount near 100%, where basically the clearing firm was fronting every single dollar traded on the buy side in those names from, I don't know, something I guess that the clearing firm felt they could afford to pay. Three-way, DTC, regulatory body involved, and the clearing firm. So the SEC would be the regulatory body. Right. 